When treating Perthes disease, there is a robust set of non-surgical options available. These options follow the principle of containment, which aims to keep the ball contained within the socket and maintain the hip's range of motion as much as possible, so that as the ball heals, it is molded into a matching pair with the socket. As the disease progresses, however, the ball changes shape, which can lead to the ball escaping from the socket. This is called a loss of containment, which complicates the disease. The change in shape, increased inflammation, poor hip motion, and tight muscles all contribute to the loss of containment. Perthes is complicated and is greatly affected by your child's age and other factors unique to them. So the following options allow us to uniquely tailor treatment to their needs. Observation. In observation, your child's hip is closely monitored with x-rays and several physical exams. This allows our team to study your child's perthes, like how fast it's progressing, how it's affecting hip motion, and any other factors unique to your child. Physical therapy. Over time, perthes causes the muscles around the hip to get tighter and tighter as the body tries to protect itself. These tight muscles limit the motion of your child's hip, which can contribute to a loss of containment. Physical therapy is used to ease or relax those muscles, like the hip adductors and the hip flexors, and strengthen the weak muscles. This will help maintain or even improve your child's hip motion. And we will work to decrease their limp as well. Massage may also provide some pain relief. Anti-inflammatory medicines. Perthes also causes inflammation in the joint, joint capsule, and the surrounding muscles, which causes a great deal of pain. We may prescribe medications to help decrease the pain by decreasing the inflammation. Sometimes scheduled doses may be necessary. Activity restrictions. Limiting activity may be necessary in some cases, but is used sparingly and usually only for a short period of time. At first, we may try to limit high impact activities, such as running or jumping. In some cases, use of a walker or wheelchair may be necessary. Bracing. A Petri brace is a removable brace that is worn at night. It helps prevent hip muscles from becoming too tight by spreading the legs apart. This position abducts the femur, which means moving it away from the center line of the body. This helps keep the ball in the socket. Petri bracing may become necessary if we see your child's hip have less and less motion or if we start to see a loss of containment. Typically, normal activity is allowed during the day and the brace is worn every night for bedtime. Casting. In some cases, it may be necessary to cast the leg in the abducted position to help keep the ball in the socket. This is called a Petri cast. After casting, it may be beneficial to inject muscle relaxants or medications to reduce pain and inflammation as well. Sometimes we may recommend a tenotomy or the cutting of a key tendon to help restore motion to the hip. These options are done when the child is asleep under anesthesia. Perthes is a disease that is unique to each child, so treatment must be equally tailored to their individual needs. Our team will work with you to come up with a plan that addresses those needs. To learn more, 
Contact the Orthopedics Institute at Children's Hospital Colorado by calling us or visit the website by clicking the links below.